hello all in this tutorial let's do one more image processing so we are trying to do something called edge detection which has a wide application in image processing as well as in other applications also so there are many ways to do edge detection and one of the popular method is edge detection using Sobel operator so if you haven't heard about it before you can go ahead and read it in wikipedia they have a good article so basically we are using two kernels here so one kernel will look like this one kernel will look like this and if you look at the numbers if you add them up you will get zero here as well as here so what is going to happen is and in an image wherever you have an edge okay so there is a sudden change in the pixel intensity so that's what we are going to uh, use for doing this edge detection so if there is no change in the intensity that means there are no edges here and if you apply this kernel in those regions you will see the pixel values are more or less same so when you add and multiply them together you will get either zero or a very small value in in both cases now suppose you have a vertical edge that means if i'm talking about a grayscale okay so let's look at lena okay so here you can see this is a kind of edge because there is a sudden change from brighter pixel to darker pixel so if you apply this kernel in that region what happens is on on one side of that uh, transition on one side of that edge you will have a large number and on the other side you will have a small number positive or negative okay so when you when you multiply and add the numbers you will either get a big positive number or you will get a, a big negative number both are possible depending upon uh, in which direction the the transition is happening so this this kernel so it is mainly used for detecting the vertical edges same way this kernel uh, same concept but this can detect uh, horizontal edges because when you have a transition in this direction when you do multiplication and addition you will have a uh, large number either positive or negative so you will find the edge in the x and y direction and the overall magnitude of the resulting pixel is found using this formula because the numbers can be uh, negative or positive okay so you find the overall magnitude using this e equation and uh, the gradient the direction of the edge can be uh, found using this formula what we are interested in is we just want to detect the edge and uh, show the edges on the output image something like this okay so usually uh, we'll apply it on uh, grayscale images so it is easier to do it on grayscale image if you have a color image usually we will convert it into grayscale image and we will apply uh, edge detection on top of it okay so that's what we are going to do so we already have this image processing ip this is the same project uh, which we developed last time uh, for doing the convolution and uh, we found uh, uh, we did the blurring operation using this this uh, convolution using this kernel or pixel all kernel values equal to one now i'm going to use the same file i'm going to modify the same file if you prefer you can start a new project and do it using the new project but i'm going to edit the same project itself okay so the interface remains the same and all other logic remains the same that's the beauty if you follow hierarchical design okay so that's why we always encourage hierarchical design so the only file that you need to modify is the file which is which is doing the convolution so as i mentioned before we have two kernels here for horizontal and vertical so i will be changing this kernel into kernel one and kernel two uh, i am keeping the width seven down to zero one thing you will notice here is the values in the core kernel they are not always positive there are negative values also so that's one thing i wanted to show you if you haven't encountered this in midlock before so we have kernel one and kernel two these are the two kernels and now let's initialize the kernel values uh, which will be some constant so i cannot use the for loop here because the values are not all same so let's write it so 
let's write for kernel 1 so kernel 1 I'm going to use so kernel uh, this is first second third fourth fifth sixth so and on so forth okay so I'm going to write the kernel for this g of x so the values are 1 0 minus 1 2 0 minus 2 plus 1 0 minus 1 Okay, so we'll say kernel 0 is 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so it is 1, 0, 0, minus 1, then 2, 0 minus 2 and again 1 0 minus 1 okay so in wedlock you can directly assign these negative values to these registers or wise what we what will do is it will automatically find the two's complement of this negative number and that will get stored here so 0 since it is uh, 8 bit wide it will be 7 zeros followed by 1 and minus 1 it will be stored as 8 ones okay because 2's complement of uh, minus 1 in binary is 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 then you represent it using 8 bits so that's our kernel 1 now we need kernel 2 this one so it will be 1 2 1 0 0 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 2 1 2 1 then 0 0 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 okay so we initialize both curves now here we were doing the multiplication okay again one good thing about hardware okay if you are using uh, a single thread processor to do this operation you can do only one convolution at a time you will have to first do this one then you have to do this one then you have to do this one okay maybe in multiprocessor multi-threaded system maybe you can achieve some uh, concurrency but in fpg of course you can get concurrency you can do both multiplication in parallel okay so for that here we did the multiplication and we stored the result in some variable called mult data so here we are doing it in parallel so we will have mult data 1 and uh, mult data 2 okay now the width of mult data 1 and mult data 2 we need to find out okay so we are going to do a uh, sign multiplication okay let's do it first then let's try to find out okay so this we are going to call it mult data one okay so this will be kernel one kernel i sorry times pixel i times a to n okay so as i mentioned before the kernel values they can be positive or negative okay so you need to do something called a signed multiplication by default if you just write like this we will use a multiplier which is unsigned so he will treat the entire number as the as the magnitude only that means it's a positive number so instead of taking it as minus one means one 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 he will take it as 255 and do the multiplication which will be problematic of course so we need to ask Vivado he need to implement a signed multiplier so to do that you need to use this function dollar signed again this is not like software this is not like at runtime he he finds out like this is some kind of sign number no you are telling Vivado you want to do uh, signed multiplication so he should go ahead and implement a signed multiplier that's what you are saying okay so this one times 
pixel data so that also has to say assigned now pixels they are post numbers you know now the thing is uh, if i just put signed here if i have a pixel value 255 he will treat it as minus one so we need to convert it into some kind of uh, post number that is easy to do you just uh, concatenate a one at the beginning then you concatenate zero here and if you treat it as a signed so this is a signed number so this is treated as a post enum make sense yeah so dollar signed this thing times uh, dollar signed kernel of i now we need to decide how many bits wide should be our mult data one okay so usually if you are multiplying two n bit numbers the result can be as big as 2n but when you are doing signed multiplication one of the bits is signed so when you multiply two n bit numbers including signed bit the result can be 2n minus 1 in our particular case we know the maximum uh, negative number in kernel is minus 2 Okay, so to represent minus 2 maximum, we need only 3 bits. And uh, this one, it is now 8 plus 1, 9 bits. Okay, so in total, we will need 8 plus 3 plus 1. Okay, 8 plus 1, 9 bits plus 3. Okay, so it seems like you will need 9 plus 3 12 bits but this is sign multiplication so one bit is for sign in the result also only one bit is representing sign so altogether you will need only 9 plus 3 minus 1 which is 11 bits for mult data so each mult data value should be 11 bits change it to 10 down to 0 to represent that so mult data 1 mult data 2 okay so both multiplication we can do in parallel one is using kernel 1 second one is using kernel 2 this is mult data 1 this is mult data 2 so this is one advantage of hardware so he will be doing uh, all this multiplication in parallel okay so there will be uh, i is equal to zero less than that so there will be nine multipliers in parallel for this guy and there will be nine multipliers in parallel for this guy and we will have the result here which is 11 bits okay so multi data is also done good enough so this logic remains the same now the sum this is also uh, similar to what we did before you will have to do this intermediate summation then you can assign it now we have two things to add so we need some data one and uh, some data int two so here also we need it we'll add it later okay so let me add one more thing so 11 is the minimum width that you require if you put anything more than 11 bits your logic will work fine there won't be any issue okay okay so same way some data int what should be the maximum value we need to do that either you can do theoretical calculation or we can look at some practical case so uh, look at the kernel so this is the kernel value so in the worst case uh, what is possible is you have 255 at every point right here you have 255 and uh, here some zero that will give the maximum value so the maximum value that is going to come is four times 255 either plus 1020 or minus 1020 so for plus 1020 we need this many bits so
for minus 1020 this is the negative representation so we need at least one sign bit okay so even okay so 11 bits are enough 4 plus 4 8 9 10 11 bits are enough to represent this is a negative number so positive also 1020 yeah 4 plus 4 8 9 10 you see the sign bit here it is 0 in the previous case it is what representing that's the negative number so that's it so you need only 11 bits for some also that will do so we can make this also 10 down to 0 10 down to 0 and you need to say you are doing a signed addition because these numbers can be also negative okay this is for mult data 1 this some data int 1 some data int 2 data int 1 this is mult data 2 one two one two one two you need to initialize both okay so we have finished uh, multiplication and summation now we need to assign it to this one so we can again have some data one and uh, some data two same way same width some data 1 and some data 2 they can be also 11 bits so we finish multiplication and summation now we need to find this uh, square values for both okay so that also we can do in parallel uh, you can either put a pipeline there also or you can do it as a, a combinational circuit okay let's put a pipeline there also so let's call something like uh, okay so we have the convolved data thing okay so let's say convolved data itself one is square of some data one so let's do some data one times some data one Let's call it uh, convol data one data int one, and we have convol data int two, which is some data two times some data two. Okay, so they are again sign numbers. Width is eleven, so convol data int. one and two there should be two times this value minus one so this is 22 so 20 and that's the minimum size required and let's put the uh, reg uh, on old data int valued something like that and uh, we can say int valid is some data valid so here also we need to say this is signed multiplication signed of some data one times total signed of some data one and here dollar signed some data two times dollar signed some data two and the error is okay that is an underscore okay so that is also done now the last step okay we are interested only in the magnitude 
like uh, we are not interested in the direction we just want to display the picture now the magnitude is given by this equation okay you can do it the square root operation but there is no direct wedlock operator for square root and uh, what you will have to do is you will have to instantiate an IP core which can do the square root. So Silinx, uh, maybe at some other point we will be using it. Uh, there is a set of IPs under so-called the Codic IP cores and uh, you can do a lot of mathematical functions using this Codic IP. Okay, so you can you can do for example yeah sine cosine sine h cos h arctangent square root so these ip can do a lot of them the only thing is it is very resource consuming so maybe we don't want to use that always also okay so i just want to detect the edge so one logic that you can use there is something called thresholding logic so you can say like when i find a pixel value like this so as i mentioned before if the if the pixel values are uniform the convolution or multiplication sum will result in zero if there are edges you will get some big value so you can define like if the value is something more than this i will make it white pixel otherwise i will make it black pixel so in that way you can clearly see the edges in the result now what should be those values again uh, you can define it if we make a flexible ip with some registers inside maybe the processor can configure that threshold value there so if the pixel value is above the threshold value my ip will make it uh, white otherwise i will make it uh, black okay so for here we can just define some value look at the output and if you feel like uh, that's not good enough you can change it okay so oh, one thing we missed uh, we need to after finding the square we need to add it okay so that maybe we can do as a combination circuit not a big deal plus this one now both are posting number remember because we found the square right so let's call it convert uh, uh, data int okay so let's call this convert data int we call this int one in two okay which is already declared i guess no okay so let's declare and the width again theoretically should be one bit more than these two so let's make it 21 down to zero doesn't matter even if you put 20 it will work because if i check the practical case these numbers won't be that big okay so that's assigned so we need wire and i can say like uh, so I don't have to put valid here. So he is finding the squares in parallel. Immediately it is going to an add a circuit and we will get the output from the add. Okay. So if convert data in, let's put some value, say maybe thousand. I will say my output pixel, which is eight bits only. Final output is always eight bit. I can say like it is eight tick hff which is a white pixel else I can say it is zero which is a black pixel and some data convert to data invalid and that goes as the output so there is no change in this valid logic okay so that's it so theoretically it should be working we can simulate and see there is no change in the test bench or anything everything exactly same we can just go ahead and uh, simulate and see simulation is over okay so in the test bench the name of output is given blurred learner so that doesn't change but this time okay so this is what we got so you can see like uh, the edges are highlighted 
but it seems like there are some some outlays here also okay some grains are here and there are uh, there are some known edges also so what you can do is you can just increase the threshold value and uh, try it again so that so that those outlays they go away so we can come here and instead of thousand let's say four thousand something and rerun okay over and uh, this is how it looks now. Now it looks uh, much cleaner. The edges are highlighted much better, right? Okay, so if you wish now, you can go to the, the block design and add this IP and uh, build the system and test it on hardware. You will get the same output. Now the one thing uh, that is a headache for us is sending the image back from from the board and seeing it on the computer through the UART interface, which is not very efficient and it's not very, very practical also. So maybe what is more interesting is after processing the image, uh, we'll try to send it to a monitor, okay? We'll try to send it to a display, not to the computer, our standalone monitor, and things would be better if you can directly see the output on the monitor now to do that okay we need to start looking at uh, video processing how can you handle video on zinc so from next tutorial that's what we are going to look at some video processing after that maybe we'll come back to image processing to do little bit more advanced stuff okay that's it thank you